it's that time of day. It's time for On Top and Hot with your silly host, John Zadar. And this is Tuesday. It is June 6th. Now, you know what we do on this show. We like to focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that have, ooh, very quick, Jerry. That's right, potential. We're looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And I'm looking for these stocks on the charts. I'm paying no mind to the news or the filings, not until I find a chart that has heat. I'm looking for a setup for a breakout or lots of volume coming in or even a surge that looks like it just isn't going to stop. Then I go through the news presses and the filings looking for the catalyst. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you. Well, today I've got a couple of those, but one of them is not one I am advising you to get into. Actually, I'm sharing this with you because we've looked at it twice before and I feel obligated to let you know what is going on. This is TIO Tingo Group. We've been very fond of this company. She's been in the news a lot. She's been making big deals. One of her last big deals was huge. It was in Nigeria. They had made this deal with an organization of 9.3 million farmers. They were getting 220 warehouses that was going to be expanded over the next two years to 8,000. And these warehouses are going to be filled with agricultural produce. Now, the neat thing was is that this company got first dibs on that produce to sell on the agricultural produce exchange over there. That sounds great. They also had this fancy type of phone that connected those 9.3 million farmers to the exchange and to each other. And they were making money off of this service. So we really like what was going on. Well, today, bad press came out that things aren't as they seem. What isn't as they seem? None of it. And I'm going to get more into that. But that's why the stock fell. Yesterday, it closed at around $2.55. This Hindenburg research report came out, and she fell to a low of a dollar, and she's bouncing back right now, and I don't think she has a right to bounce back. Right now, she's at $1.32, and she has fallen over 48%. Now, let me show you what's going on over here. Looking at the relative volume. Everybody has loved this stock until today. Well, this is the average volume over the last 30 days, her love period. Well, she's only got about 8 million shares there. Look at today when fear kicked in, almost 59 million shares. A lot of activity, a lot of people jumping ship. These Hindenburg research reports are powerful. This is a professional organization that shorts stocks. They tell everybody they short. Everybody knows that they short. But they're very professional about it. What they basically do is research on companies. So they get the dirty laundry, skeletons in the closet, find the dots that aren't connecting to other dots. And they file all that away in a locked safe. And then they wait for the stock to run. Well, when it runs, before they release the bad information, they make their play. They're shorters. They're in this for the money. So what they do is they go to the broker and they borrow 10,000 shares. How much does that cost? Nothing. The broker just gives them 10,000 shares for free. And what does he do with them? Well, considering the price is at an all-time high, going from 50 cents to, say, $5, he sells them. That gives him $50,000 that he gets to keep. That's his money right now. Then they release the bad information, their research. They can back it up. That causes the stock to fall. So it goes from $5 down to, let's say, a dollar. And he says, yeah, that's a good point to give these shares back. Remember, he borrowed them. He's got to give 10,000 shares back. So he's got $50,000. At a dollar a piece, he can buy them back for $10,000. Return them, and he gets to keep $40,000 and didn't really have to risk a dollar of his money. Nothing. That's why they do this. And you can trust the information that they reveal because they did their research. I got hit by this group before. Back in 2019, when I was in Genius, when they speak, people listen and charts fall and fall hard. Now, there's no way I can cover all this information. I'm going to try to cover as much as I can without putting you to sleep. So I'm going to show you first off, this is a very long, let's just call it document. What you see here, these bullets, this is the summary. This is the short version of it right there and we're done yeah right that was a lot well they've got a lot more here i mean a lot folks 
This is the proof in the pudding. All of those bullets, they make claims, and then down here, they fill in all the proof, pictures and everything. So I'm gonna show you a little bit here so that you get the idea. This is at hindenburgresearch.com forward slash tingo. Just that easy if you wanna read this yourself. Let me make this as easy for you as I can. I think right there is as big as I can get it without hiding behind me. All right, right here we've got a disclaimer. We are short tingo group. They're letting us know what they do. They short this company. And then they give us all their reasons. Because we believe the company is an exceptionally obvious scam with completely fabricated financials. Folks, if what they said here wasn't true, that right there would be enough to get them for slander and they'd be sued. You don't get sued for telling the truth, even if the market went down. You got to remember, news presses are the same sort of thing. It's real truth information. The market went up on the news presses. Well, this happens to bring it down, but it is truth. And nobody can get in trouble for telling the truth. You know what I mean. <laughs> they go on to tell us that Tingo is headquartered in New Jersey, and they claim to have several business segments focused on providing mobile phones, food processing, and an online food marketplace for farmers primarily located in Nigeria. Now, right from the beginning, they give you a lot of information about the man himself, his dossier, his biography. It's not real. He's made it all up. He said he had a PhD from the Malaysian University of 2007. He doesn't. His name's not in the system. Um, in 2019, he claimed to have launched Tingo Airlines, encouraging customers to fly with Tingo Airlines today even had pictures with his name on the planes. Well, media outlets later uncovered that Tingo had photoshopped their logo onto the pictures of the airplanes. Tingo's food division, it's only seven months old, and yet they claim to have generated $577 million in revenue in the last quarter alone, representing 68% of their total reported revenues. And they did all that without even having a food processing facility of their own. They say they had third parties doing it. You know how much that would have cost? Then they tell us down here that following its groundbreaking, Tingo reported in May, the one that just passed, that they had made significant progress on the facility, including the laying of the foundations of numerous buildings. Now, they've actually got a picture here. Let me see if I can find this. They went down there. That's what the next sentence says. They went down there and took pictures. This was the celebration. This is the monument they built. And this was the very beginning of the structure. So everybody would have a cornerstone, if you will. Well, this is what was there when they told us they had done all this foundation work. They're not doing anything. And this basically is the tip of the iceberg, folks. They're not doing what they're saying. The things they say they've done, they haven't done. Matter of fact, Tingo announced a $150 million agreement with a UK entity called EvTech Energy. But UK filings show that EvTech was dormant as of most of its recent annual report held no money in the bank. Tingo claims in its reverse merger press release that members of two unnamed farming cooperatives supply the majority of its 9.3 million user base. We were talking about that. A local media outlet identified and contacted those cooperatives. Both said they had never heard of Tingo and had fewer than 100 farmers in each cooperative as it was. And folks, it just goes on and on. Tingo claimed its mobile handset leasing, call, and data segments generated $128 million. But their checks with the Nigerian Communications Commission showed it had no record of Tingo being a mobile license at all. So this is my point. And there's a lot more information here, folks. If you want to come over here, as I said, it's HindenburgResearch.com slash Tingo. I hate to pull a company down, but this sounds like a bad company. It sounds like something you'd find on the pink. And I'm not expecting them to remain on the NASDAQ very much longer. You go bankrupt, they'll throw you off. You're late on your filings, they'll throw you off. They got a long list of reasons they can throw you off. And I'm getting a feeling they've probably touched one or more of those reasons. Let's go take a look at that chart. As we do in every video, we're going to be doing our charting on Think or Swim. This is a free trading platform you get from TD Ameritrade. Now, we are going to look at TIO here in just a minute, but I want to take a quick glance at DFLI first. This is Dragonfly Energy. 
I covered this stock yesterday for one particular reason. This chart, the one hour chart. She has what you call a divergence on her. A divergence is when the price is doing the opposite of what the technical say it should be doing. And when the reversal comes, it normally comes with a big bang because there's a lot of pressure being built up here that gets released. Well, as you can see, the price has been falling for the last 18 days. Our PPO has been rising for the last 12 days and our MACD has been rising for the last eight days. We looked at it right here after this huge poke, which I kind of think of as the cork being halfway pushed out of the champagne bottle. That put a ripple in everything here, loosened it. And right after we looked at it is when she's gotten up on top and she is starting to push up just a little bit, but look how close that 200 day SMA is. This is an atypical breakout chart if ever I've seen one. And with all this pent up pressure from this divergence, when she breaks that 200, I'm expecting a rocket launch. And she has got a low float, only 9.3 million. So it's worth putting on your watch list, DFLI. I think she's going to the moon. All right, let's go take a look at TIO. That is a six month, four hour chart. We had a low bubble back here in October of 57 cents. She started her run at the end of March. She was down there at about 80 cents and got clear up to $5.89. Had a drop back down to her 20 day, bounced back up to 573 and she started falling way before the Hindenburg. She started falling hard. Came all the way down here to the 200 and yes, looks like she may have probably bounced off of this 200. Most likely come under it a little bit and then come back up like a rubber ball in water. But the Hindenburg research report came out and she had a tumble and a fall. As you can see, all of the oscillators are down in the basement. RSI is under the 30, which is the floor, and it's at 20 right now. Am I expecting this to come back? I think the company's a scam company, folks. I don't think there's any reason to play with it. Now, in saying that, we're traders. I will play pump and dump if I'm aware it's a pump and dump. I just want the momentum. I'm just looking for the rise. You know, if I'm hitchhiking, I don't pick and choose which cars I'll get in and out of. I will get in any car and ride down the road. I'm just looking for a ride. So yeah, if this started to run, I would probably play it. But you gotta be careful. You get stuck in this, you get, you know, holding a bag, you could end up holding a bag forever. This company's probably going to fall off the NASDAQ. That's just a feeling. End up down at the OTC getting no love, no respect, and nobody. Now here's a company worth getting excited about. This is Faraday Future Intelligent Electric, ticker FFIE. She came on the market in 2021 through a SPAC merger. She's into EVs, electric mobility. She was at $10, hit a high of 17, and she's been falling ever since then. And as far as I can see, the problem is she isn't making any revenues. That's the big deal. Well, the charts look good. They are breaking out right now. All we need is a catalyst, and we've actually got it. That's why the charts are breaking out. News came out last week. As I said, they haven't been making any revenues, and the news last week looks like that's all going to change. So the investors are quite excited right now. So FFIE, she finished the day at about 35.5 cents with just about 31.5% gains. Now, what exactly does this company do? Faraday Future is the pioneer of the ultimate AI tech luxury ultra spire market in the intelligent EV era and the disruptor of traditional ultra luxury car civilization epitomized by Ferrari and Maybach. FF is not just an EV company though. They are also a software driven intelligent internet company. Ultimately, FF aims to become a user company by offering a shared intelligent mobility ecosystem. Definitely some more due diligence is necessary here. They've got some big plans I'm not aware of. And this intelligent internet company, I haven't seen a whole lot about that, but I can see the intelligent stuff. When you go over to their website, you can see their car. They've got a fancy car here, has more interior room than any car ever designed before, really wide wheelbase and technology you're just not gonna believe. Matter of fact, if you come up here and click that learn more button right there, this will take you to a video, and this video is long. 
I swear I watch shorter movies on Netflix and Tubi. This is 147 minutes long and they talk very slow and pronunciate every word. They want you to hear it clearly. <laughs> They're not in a hurry like me, but they've got a lot of great information in here about the safety features, the intelligence features, the speed, I mean everything. Now I got a picture here just to give you an idea of what's going on. This is the interior of the car. Now these seats come all the way back. It's self-driving, self-parking, has summons, the car comes to you instead of you going to the car. But look at those video screens. Have you ever seen a, a d display that big in a car before? That is 27 inches. It just folds up into the roof and comes down. And you've got this big one up in the front seat. Now these can sync together or they can run independently. This is connected to the internet, live streaming. You can do Zoom office meetings. This is supposed to be your office as well as your car. And this does so much. It's got LiDAR, infrared, uh, radar, and other things as well. So as I said, if you really want to know about this company, this video is going to tell you everything about the car. But that internet company stuff, I don't know. Some more research is needed. But you're looking for the catalyst? This is it. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Whoa, it exploded. It's not like she was ever under the radar. She's here at about 71 million shares on a daily average for the last 30 days. But today she did about 250 million shares. Like I said, investor excitement. But nobody's going to get excited about that. Our outstanding share count is 1 billion. I don't have a clue what the float is. I didn't look it up, but I'm presuming it's going to be pretty high. And I was going through their disclosures. They have intentions of putting more shares on the market, which is going to increase this even more. So we've got that to contend with. As I said, the company isn't making any money whatsoever. So this news that came out last week is a real big deal. Now we've got lots of filings over here, but most of them all have to do with the news. The news is talking about a three phase program that they're working with. And you can see like right here, this one has to do with phase one. A couple of them have to do with phase three and things like that. So let me see, let's just jump on over to that news. This is the one piece of news that's got everything happening right now. So we're gonna jump into this. This came out, I think last Thursday. Faraday Future signs up the first FF91 2.0 Futurist Alliance user post final launch, continuing to execute on phase one of its delivery plan. They're taking pre-orders for these cars. Now they tell us here this is a very strong car. The vehicle is driven by three motors, making this a 1,050 horsepower car. Oh my God, I hope nobody kills themselves. That is incredible. I've never driven a car with that much horsepower. And they say it can hit 60 miles an hour in less than two and a half seconds. Does anybody really need to go that fast? The car also has the capability to perceive users' habits, engage in continuous learning and involve. It can even teach you how to race how to drive in racing style. And I think you might need it with this sort of horsepower and speed. Now, what's going on here, as I said, this is pre-market. They are offering these cars out to everybody before they come on the market, and they've got a special deal. And this is how it lays out. I'm not quite sure which car it is they're talking about. In this piece of news, they are talking about the FF91 vehicle, which will be available for a $100 deposit and $14,900 a year. That's right, a year. Because they tell us down here, if I can get down to it, they tell us down here that the price of the car is $309,000. And rather than make monthly payments, you make a yearly payment. Now, I saw over here, where is it? Yep, that's the one. See here in this video, they said they wanted $5,000 deposit for these cars. But I also read, or it was in this video, that the first $2,000 only have to come up with a $100 deposit and then that $14,900 annual payment. But there's a lot of excitement around this company right now. The money is starting to come in. Not sure when delivery is, but the chart's moving right now. Let's go take a look at that. 
This is Faraday Future, ticker FFIE. That's a six month, four hour chart. We got a high here in February of $1.51 and a low in May of 14 cents. She has been falling for a while, had this huge rip and then came all the way back down. And here are some of our strong resistance and supports at 37 cents, 65 cents and $1.16. Now, right after she hit that low bubble, she stopped that downtrend. She bounced up, put an initiative break onto the 200. Here's another one showing she wants to get up there. It's still too steep though, but once it got flat, she jumped up there and she's on her nine day SMA now climbing up the tree. All of our oscillators are pushing up, every single one of them. RSI is in the red at 82 and our volume is growing. The four hour chart is sweet. 20 day, one hour view. So we got a low bubble here of 18 cents. She's pretty much just been going sideways these last 20 days with some bumps and jumps. But these last two days she took off. Yesterday she started the climb, leveled off, and first thing this morning she launched, hitting a high of 38 cents after market. You can see that volume is more defined here and our oscillators are still on fire. Every single one of them is way up high. Looking at our five day, five minute. So she's really hanging close to the 200 here. You can see that she bounced off it here, bounced off it here, and now she's off and on her own. The chick has left the nest. She has launched way up here to 38. She's bounced back to that 20 day SMA and she's hanging around the 50. Looks like the 50 will be her strong support, not the 200 anymore. Finally, our oscillators are cooling off. Everything is now starting to push down, but the price is going sideways. It is not actually falling. So we could have a divergence building up here. I'd keep my eye on it. FFIE, getting a lot of volume. Volume is important. Price is rising. We like to see that. Big news coming out that they're making money now. I would keep my eye on FFIE. Another news press, we could get a good rip out of this. Holy cow, we got another penny stock from the NASDAQ. This is Novo Integrated Sciences, ticker NVOS, another hot chart. And she's had news that has got the chart moving and it looks like it's gonna keep moving. NVOS, she finished the day at 14.7 cents with almost 16.5% gains. Now, I don't know why she's got a transfer agent verified over here and independent directors, but they're green, they're good. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Now the description here tells us, our patients motivate us to provide excellence in multidisciplinary private healthcare assessment, diagnosis, treatment, pain management, and prevention through the integration of medical technology, advanced therapeutics, and rehabilitative science. But a better definition comes from their most recent financial. They say the company's decentralized healthcare business model is centered on three primary pillars. First pillar, service networks deliver multidisciplinary primary care services through an affiliate network of clinic facilities they're going to get a lot of clinics out there that are going to be hooking up online second pillar technology develop deploy and integrate sophisticated interconnected technology interfacing the patient to the healthcare practitioner so they're going to get all the technology so that the patients can see their doctors online. Their third pillar, products. Develop and distribute effective, personalized health and wellness product solutions allowing for the customization of the patient preventative care remedies. Well, once you have all those patients coming to all your different facilities online, you've got yourself a captured audience. You can easily now start prescribing or suggesting products that they can use for their well-being. So that's what the company is all about. What was the relative volume around the company today? Another big jumper, well over 300% increase in volume, going from roughly 11.7 million to 37 million. Share structure on NVOS. Outstanding share count is bearable. We got 145 million there. If we subtract our restricted shares owned by the management, that would be 123 million left in the float. So presuming these numbers are correct, we should have a float of about 123 million. Financials for NVOS. 
Well, they're doing pretty good over the last three years, increasing by about two million each year, going from seven to nine to 11. Don't forget those three zeros up there we got to put behind any of these numbers. Quarterly, oh, what a mess. What happened there? Drinking and driving. We went from 13 million all the way to minus 8 million, back up to 3 million, and now we're at 2.5. But what's really crazy here is that when they lost 8 million in revenue, they only lost 92,000 in profit. Little strange, but she is making money. She's doing okay. Disclosures for the company. All right, we got lots of them here, and the only one I found that was of interest that I should pass on to you was this one right here. They have been notified by the NASDAQ that they failed to meet the minimum bid price requirement, and they were warned, and then they were given their six months, and they had up until May 22nd to get the price up over a dollar. Well, they didn't do it. Not that it's up to them, but the price did not succeed. So that was it. They were gonna come down to the OTC, but out of the goodness of their hearts, I really don't know, the company did not appeal it, but the very next day, May 23rd, NASDAQ notified the company that although the company has not yet regained compliance, they were eligible for an additional 180 calendar days, another six months, and so they've got until November 20th now to get their price up over a dollar. So they're in hot water, but they're not going to go anywhere for a while. Now let's take a look at that news. Now there's not a lot of news to consider here. A few pieces about their financials and then two pieces of news that are very similar to each other. And both of them had the charts bouncing. You had this one that came out April 27th. Novo Integrated Sciences signs agreements for unsecured, non-dilutive debt instrument with a principal sum of $70 million. So they got a loan basically for $70 million and people were excited about that. Uh, Seeking Alpha tells us that the stock jumped 16% as we're going to see when we go look at the chart. Then we had news come out today. Nova Integrated Science receives $40 million commitment to develop elder care facilities in Canada. Now we'll take a peek at this. Now, forgive me if I don't say this name right. This joint venture collaboration is with Sheikh Khalid bin Mohammed bin Fahad Aithaniyan. I'm sure I got it wrong. <laughs> and his global healthcare organization. The company has received a letter of funding commitment for a direct investment into the company. This is not a loan, it's an investment of $40 million from the Sheik through his organized golf international minerals and energy group. The Sheik is from a prominent business family in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and has been involved in financing multiple multi-billion dollar projects and companies in the Middle East and internationally. I know it sounds like a fairy tale, doesn't it? We've heard this before. It sounds very much like something else, but it all seems real. It all seems real. After TIO, I just don't know what to believe anymore. But that is what the catalyst is right now. They just had a $40 million investment from a multi-billionaire. So everybody's excited about that and the stock is running. Let's go take a look at that chart. Not a very pretty chart, right? This is ticker NVOS, Novo Integrated Sciences, and that is a six month, four hour view. Now we got a good high bubble six months ago of $1.33 and then some hellacious falls all the way down to 29 cents. And she just kept falling, dribbling more and more until she hit a low of one cent at the end of March. Now looking at current times, this big run came from that $70 million loan that they got. It was down here at about 10 cents and went up to 22 cents. You're looking at over 100% gains, 120%. Then she came back down to that 200, bounced off of it quite a few times, had another rip and then a serious dip, but like a rubber ball on water, she came back up, which is what I would expect after a couple taps on the top of the 200. I wouldn't think she'd go down. You can see our 200 is on an incline. So she's more inclined to be on top of it. She had a nice run today. She pushed up real high, got up to 16 and a half cents and she has fallen back and she is at 14 and a half cents right now. Oscillators. Well, we just had a crossover on our PPO and it is pushing up 
as is our MACD, but there's a little bit of pullback as you would expect with that right now. And the RSI has fallen down to 55. Take a look at our 20 day one hour view. All right, looking at that 200 rolling over down and now she's totally flat. You can see she's jumped. Once this got flat, she jumped up there and she's getting solid footing right now. She's jumping up and down on top of that 200 and I would expect that she's gonna jump up from this point. Our oscillators say she's warm. She is sitting on top. That doesn't show a lot of spunk there right now, but it doesn't show that she's cold and the volume was strong today. Looking at that five day, five minute. Well, let's see here. I'm gonna draw a regression channel in these last five days from the low bubble over just to see where we're at. All right, so she was riding this channel for the last five days. She was hugging that 200, launched off the 200 here, hitting that high of 16 and a half cents, bounced basically off the top of this channel, right? And she's come back in and she's floating over the middle right now. Here comes the 200 pushing up. This should help push it up on top of the channel up here. And when it gets out, that's like a dog getting out of its kennel. You see, gets real excited, runs way far away. But the further it runs, you got to expect it to come back. You can only get so much spread between the SMAs. Our oscillators, what are they looking like right now? Uh, God, they're kind of mixed up. Looks like things are pushing down right now. I would expect it to hit the 200 and actually come under it. Probably come under this halfway point underneath the 200. You might be able to get a price somewhere around, I don't know, 13.6, something like that. I don't think she'd come all the way back down here, but she could. Don't just jump into it because it's a low price. Wait until she's on top of the nine and had at least three green bars if you're looking at your one minute, five minute charts. You wanna make sure She's changed her mind about which direction she's going. NVOS. It's weak, but it's there. And we're early. Or are we on time? Oh, how I wish I could tell you. There's three hot stocks to put on your watch list. But really, it's only two. Because TIO is a no-no. In my opinion, folks, don't play with it. It's a scam operation as far as I can tell. But do your own research. NVOS she is set up for a breakout, but I got to tell you what, it is Faraday, FFIE, that has got me excited. She's at a very, very low price. She's got an exciting vehicle out there that nobody can compete with, and they're about ready to start making money. People could get excited. We could start seeing a climb from here, not just a bounce or a surge. But again, do your own DD. That company's got a lot of information we did not go over. You know what I always say? The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.